Hi Tech and Talk. So today we are going to start uh, iMemory cache implementation. So why it's important? Because we don't want every time when there is a request, data should not be fetched from the database straight away. It should look first in the cache to increase the um, request response time and to reduce the you know utilization of the resources. Uh, that's why uh, memory cache is um, not memory cache the cache is important so overall there are two main types of caches one is um, memory cache and the other one is distributed cache so we will be focusing on in this project uh, on the i memory cache so let's get started and try to implement uh, i memory cache we will be doing the very basic implementation in this um, video and we will you know build up on the top of that in the coming videos so starting from the uh, store controller which is now our home controller so we can add um, i memory cache dependency so cache we can add private read only i memory uh cache this one and uh, we can say this is a memory cache we are not talking about the what is the best place of putting this memory cache in which layer exactly we will start with the controller and in the coming videos we will you know improve and we'll see if there is a much better or more better place to move this memory cache so we have almost injected i memory cache inside our home controller um, this one uh, and uh, now we don't want to directly you know fetch uh, stores list from the database we first will check in the memory cache so how we can do that is uh, was store list is equal to underscore memory cache dot get and we can put you know uh, some kind of name we can let's say um stores this way uh, and uh, yeah so uh, the other way is we also should ideally mention that is a list of store models store model like this I and we can now check if uh, store list is null so we can um, what we can do is we can move this logic inside here in that block and here after that we need to uh, set the store service dot set and here we can pass the string the key value of this list to store inside that cache and the other one will be the other parameter will be the list of stores this way uh, yeah that would be our memory cache and straight away we can return the store list at the end and this how simply we can uh, cache we can implement the layer of cache 
uh, and same we will do in the product but before that we can we should test this you know implementation uh, so that was the second step first step would always be to configure that cache uh, inside you know services uh, over services collection Uh, we can we will be using you know uh, very basic configuration this time in the next videos we will we will see other options of that memory cache so that that is the first step every time and that would be the second step okay let's start debugging the application to double check from where this list is now coming from and currently it's taking some time to build which is understandable I guess so by default we will be presented with a login view and uh, if the user is not logged in already because I was logged in last time so I will be redirected to stores uh, let me refresh and now see a uh, list of stores so it should be cached already so now I'm getting the stores from the cache because this is not null state away that store list will be return to the view without accessing the database this time but this is how you know we can uh, save calls to the database uh, same we will be doing for the products uh, product controller so here uh, we will be adding um, cache the injection private read only i i memory cache uh, memory cache and inside that controller that would be i memory cache memory cache uh, memory cache this way and here because this is also a get method we can um, we can first check the product list from the cache dot get that would be the list of um, product models and we can uh, we should pass the key value which will be the uh, products uh, in our case we can choose any of any you know name but it should be consistent throughout the application and next we can check if a product is null in that particular scenario we should be fetching from the database Yeah, there, there is another interesting scenario here uh, because uh, the search also search is also involved so what we can do probably uh, we can pass the search as a key as well here right so every time if there is a new key which will the combination of products 
uh, underscore um, the search query every time every time there is a you know new search a new key will be generated in the database so, uh, not in the database in the memory cache so we can use this one uh, as a key and to store products list and we to store this one we can simply uh, use the same mechanism to store and this time we will be using its set method and at the end we will be returning products list okay so let's let's um let's debug that one as well to see if everything is working as expected okay we are getting list of stores and for the particular product uh, first of all we can see search is empty we will be searching inside the cache which is null and we can save that product list inside the cache next time we will be searching uh, the store or the products uh, we will be getting the list of products from the cache which is fine and the additional scenario is if we are uh, you know adding a particular query and we try to search this time it should not be able to look and find in the memory cache because now the key is different we can see that because key would be the you know, products underscore product because we have searched against you know the product keyword uh, now it will be get stored in the cache that is fine and next time we will search it will be coming from the cache straight away we can see that only one record is coming from the cache next block will be skipped and we will be returning that um, results and if now we search and because that is the previous key we you know saved again so the three list count will be returning from the cache straight away without going to the database so this is how easily we can implement a memory cache memory cache is helpful to reduce the um, resource utilization especially the database utilization uh, but we should be very careful whenever we are implementing those cache mechanism uh, from con concurrency to the uh, over consumption of memory there are you know vast variety of issues that can happen so in the next videos we will try to cover you know most of those scenarios one by one so stay tuned till then have a good day talk soon bye